A viewer asked me if I could put up a video about setting the uh, throttle position sensor. Well, I thanked him for reminding me because I had filmed it and I forgot all about it. I was going to edit it and put it up. So that's what this one's about. And I got a lot of comments and different things about finding this problem. Uh, one person asked me, did I have the throttles put in sync? I haven't yet. I'm going to try everything else. And also one asked if, the, if it's stock exhaust, which it is, but the original owner bored them out. He did that where you take a hole cutter and go in through the back, you know, pull, the, pull that out, then take a stick and put it in there and work it up and down, take the baffles out. Well, I replaced the back end, and I think I had it up at one time where how I repaired them back there, but the baffles are gone, but still, it ran great for a long time like that. In fact, it ran better with those plates put back in than uh, the way he had them bored out, because he didn't have it rejetted or anything like that or whatever they do for it, a throttle thing on it. And... Uh, I'm just taking it, like I said, one step at a time. This is Wednesday. Saturday, that uh, computer for this, I call it the brain for the bike, it should be here. But I want to try everything else, take it out, get a half decent day, take it out and try it before I put that uh, computer on the bike, uh, the, the next one that I'm going to use. That way I can tell if that's it or not because I'm, I'm doing so much to it. And one other thing the book said is don't take your throttle on these, pull it open and let it snap closed. They said you shouldn't do that. That could hurt the inside of that throttle body. Uh, you look at it, it's like, uh, I don't understand how that could really hurt it, but it's probably not a good idea to do it. So I'm taking it step by step, hoping one of these things will fix it and to set the throttle position sensor. One thing on it I didn't understand in the book was they say run it, run it like two, three minutes up to temperature, shut it off, then check your code. And I thought, well, when you set it, do you have to have the engine running? No, you don't. You shut the engine off to set the, set the throttle position sensor. The reason you run it and get it up to temperature is to get a code in there or that reading that you need to go by. They want to make sure it's there so when you, you know, like if you, if it cleared itself somehow and uh, the code wasn't there, well, you'd think it's all right and it's not or whatever. Not the code, but the line. They want to make sure you just ran it, then you check it, you can see where the line. There's three settings I'll show on there, top, middle, and bottom. And I get mine in the middle. Somebody asked me if I had done that. Yes, I had done that and got it right in the middle. So, and I got a few other things I want to look over in a book and try before I do that. Right where the seat is, down here, this left side cover I took off. And right behind there, you'll see the two big main plugs that go into your computer for your bike. And then there's a wiring loom that goes up through here with all your wiring from that. And right back in there, you'll want, there's a black one and there's a white one. You want the white one. And you just reach back in there and pull it out this way and there is a white part with a uh, cover on it that's the one you want and what I did was I bought the dealer switch it's just a switch the other side has a plug that'll go right on there it'll fit on there so I ain't got to put a little jumper in I don't like to use the jumper On this white thing I pulled out, you can see on this side is a little tab you push down to get this cap off. It's just like when you unplug two plugs or plug in a socket. This is just a cap, so I'm going to push down on this, wiggle the cap, and it comes off. And that's where you're going to plug in or use your jumpers if you have nothing else that you can use. And this goes together this way. So if I'm looking at it and the clip's on the right hand side, you can see by this uh, piece I have, and that's the way it plugs in, and there's two wires on the bottom. So if you were going to use a jumper, you have 
the clip on the right, turn it up. These two are where you put your jumper in. But I didn't like doing that. I've done it, but I don't like it. So I'm going to plug that in. Now I can take my switch. Before I did this, I took a continuity meter, put on these two wires on this switch. And then I turn the switch on and off so I make sure it's off. So when I first start, I want it off. And I'm going to put it up through here and stick it right there. That way I can get a hold of it while I'm doing this. So it's plugged in. Now it's off. I know it's off. I can switch it on when I need to. So I've got my switch ready to go. I come up to the dash. I'm going to turn the key on. And everything looks normal in here. Now I'll reach down and turn that switch on to get the code. And you can see the clock went off and there's a COO. That means that's the code I need. And that's showing me where that throttle position sensor is at. Now if you look close, right up in the corner is that line. There's three positions where that line should be. It should be right in the middle. It's at the top. I knew it was wrong. So what I'm going to do now is take my gas tank off, take uh, the dash off, all that stuff, and I'm going to see if I can get to the, a, uh, what do you call it, the uh, cell or solenoid. Yeah, the solenoid. And I'm going to mark it first before I do anything. I want to bring that line down to the middle. So I think what I can do is take the tank off, the dash, everything, plug just the dash back in and lay there, and then I'm going to see if I can get to that. They say some of them are in there tight. You need a star bit to get in there, so I might have to put the bit in, use a little wrench on it. I have some really small wrenches I can get in there and maybe get it. But first, I'll put white paint across it and put a line so I know where it was when I started. And those are very sensitive to move. You don't move it very much and I'll adjust that back and forth until I get it right and I think that'll take care of my problem. So once I get the tank off and everything I'll go from there. But I have my bike up on the stand. I use this stand just to get the bike up. It doesn't lift it off the wheels because that's made for a Harley and uh, it just holds the bike straight, straight up and down. So when I take that tank off uh, I don't want anything to bump it. In fact, it's nice because my handlebars won't move back and forth because the tire's down on the ground or on the floor in here. You have to be so careful with that tank. I have a welding table I bring over. I put a cover on it, put the tank on it, and I cover it right away so I don't bump it. But, and I always take my time and I always like to drain the gas out, but I'm thinking I get that set in the middle, it'll be all right. Bike runs great, it's just at idle. It, after it's warmed up, it really goes up high. And that's what that sensor is for to adjust that. I did a lot of research in my book and they show a picture here and tell mostly what everything is. And then over here, they have an exploded diagram of everything and they show the sensors, two sensors right here, and number 16 is the throttle position sensor. That's the one I want, so it's the one on the bottom. If we look at the carburetor, the spring over here for your throttle on and off is here. This is on the opposite side. So what I did was I took this old set of carburetors and I marked them. So the carburetor sets on the bike this way with the throttle cables over here. So there is my sensors. This would be on the right-hand side. And this is my uh, throttle position sensor on the bottom. That's the one I have to get to. The top one is, and I marked it, the secondary throttle position sensor, STP. Then this box right here in the middle is your uh, secondary throttle valve actuator. They call it the STVA. That is right here.
that unit. So I got to get to this bottom one, and it takes a star bit to get in there to loosen this. And uh, this old one, you can see how I'm going to mark it with white paint, and then I'll take a red pencil with a real fine point and put a line on it so I know where I started from. And this doesn't move a whole lot, just a little bit. It takes very little to get that line in the, sense, uh, in the center on the dash when I bring up the code. So now I know I have to go to the bottom. In the book, I read all through it, checked it out, and it's saying about you have to take off so much which is right because to get to that bottom sensor you can see the top one right here but the bottom one's underneath so you have to take this hose off of course the gas tank loosen the clamps on this rubber boot that uh, your air intake you have to take this sensor off and this sensor and just lay them there this hose comes up out of there now before you, I always take it this way, it's easier to get out. So before you pull this out, make sure you take this clamp right here that holds this on, that metal clamp. Because if you don't, when you pull that out, you'll bend it up. So you want to take it off. Now the rubber all flex. While I have it off, I'll clean it all out. Another thing while I have this off, I'm going to be opening my radiator and checking to make sure it's topped off. Uh, I should check the side bottle, but I can check the top and it could be down just a little hair because it'll expand into the bottle and come back so it won't hurt. But just to check to see about how much is in it. So now I'm ready to pull this boot out of here. I have this uh, clamp. Then they say right under here under the frame you should be able to get at it and I might have to use just a star bit and then a little wrench I'll see how I can get at it once I get that off I hung a light up here so I could really see up in there to do this when I took my gas tank off I used my Jeff Link stick <laughs> he had sent me some stuff I clear coated it I wanted to keep it uh, he was getting rid of his boulevard and getting a different one. He sent me some stuff and this stick is perfect For uh, putting under there to hold the gas tank up and it really is just the perfect size He has it the right length and everything works great So up under here you can see There's the sensor right there and I took a white paint pen and put hope you can see that white paint on there then I took a fine tip marker I mean a really fine one and I put a line on there so now when I loosen it I'll know where it was when I move it and that doesn't move a whole lot so I'm going to loosen it move it a little bit I'm going to plug in a dash turn it on and see uh, if that code comes off or if the lines in the middle so that's what I'm working with but that is hard to see right there right on the bottom is where the paint is and the line with the gas tank off and everything like that uh, the air filter and that disconnected I put the dash up there and plugged it in and it works when it comes on and now it'll show an F1, is that an F1 or FI? Somebody tell me, but an F1 I think it is. It means there's a code in there. It comes on because of that stuff unplugged. But I threw the switch, it comes up with the little uh, reading with the line that I have to go by. And over here, somebody there. And over here, when I first turn it on, and you hear that something like running and the uh, speedometer needle goes up and back that's this unit right here that is it says it's the uh, secondary throttle valve evacuator what that does is that's kind of setting these as a choke and I believe it senses the air temperature and the bike temperature like if you've been running it and that and it places the choke 
where it would be if it was a hand choke to start it. That's why you don't have a choke on these. Then the one I'm working with is a throttle sensor. This goes down the pipes into the engine and these are what has to be controlled and as you give it more throttle it knows how much this and that and it has to be set right on and that's what's mines off. So is that setting in there like this I have my line my white paint line and my little wee line on that sensor so now I'm ready to loosen this and I'm going to move it a little bit and see if that line goes up and down which it should so I can set it right on when it's in the middle it's on I have the sensor loose I turned it a little wee bit so now I'm going to turn on my bike right here the sensor will be there when I throw the switch on okay it shows it at the top I'm going to reach under here I got a hold of it right there it is down the bottom okay back up right there now if you can see it's right in the middle it went down to the bottom I went a little too far come back so I believe that is a T25 star wrench that I'm using I'm gonna leave that on put the light on here and boy it ain't move very much Wow that did take nothing I'm gonna tighten it no it went to the bottom it moved okay that's a thing there it is in the middle so I'm gonna go off camera and I'm gonna have to hold it as I tighten it because it moves it but you can see I got my fingers on it hope the camera picks that up and I move it a little bit I tight there wow now if I tighten that it might stay and that should be I it. tightened it down it stayed in the middle so I'm gonna turn the bike on again just to double check and that solenoids tight okay I'll throw the switch the F1 because I have so much uh, unplugged there it is the little line is right in the middle Wait, where am I at? There we go. The camera can pick it up. It's right in the middle. That's where it wants to be. So, now I can uh, put all this back together, take it out for a ride and see. Now that I know it's set, I'm looking right at the line right there. And I moved it, this part, up just my oh my that's unbelievable about the thickness of the line I put on is all I moved at wow I can see it's just about the thickness of the line amazing all the more it took what a big difference